Today's video is a beginner's video. I will be giving you the scoop on reciprocating saw blades. I had a question from a viewer on what saw blade they should use on what material. So I'll be addressing that in today's video. So now on to the saw blade types. You've got a strictly wood cutting blade. You've got a strictly metal cutting blade. And you've got a blade that will cut wood that has metal in it like screws or nails. If you want to know what blade is what, you just simply look on the end of the blade and it'll tell you this one's metal and this one is for wood with nails. So what if you find a blade that's like this, used and it's got no markings at all on it? Well, once you get used to it, it's pretty easy. This is a wood cutting blade and you can tell because the teeth are spaced further apart. You can tell this is a metal cutting saw blade because the teeth are very, very close together. And you can tell this is a bimetal blade or a wood cutting blade with nails in it because it kind of looks like a wood cutting blade that's got this weird curve to it. And the curve is there in case you hit a nail, it'll slice through the nail while still cutting wood. Now let me give you an explanation of tooth spacing and cutting wood. The further apart the teeth are, the le that means the less teeth per inch you have. What that is going to do is give you a rougher cut, but you're going to be able to cut through the wood much faster. Now you're going to get a little nicer cut when the teeth are closer together than you will if the teeth are further apart, but the cut will go slower. Now before you get too uh, bogged down with a nicer cut or a rougher cut, you're never going to get a nice, nice cut with a sawzall. It's not made for making fine furniture. It's made for cutting through wood quickly, mainly used for demolition, cutting down walls and things like that. Now, if you really want a nice smooth cut, you're going to have to use a round saw blade like a circular saw blade or a table saw to get that nice smooth edge on your wood. Now, when you're talking teeth per inch, the same goes for metal cutting blades. For metal, it's mainly the thickness of the metal. If you're going to be cutting a nice thick piece of metal, you can use a rougher blade. I've got one here with a 14 teeth per inch blade. That's going to make a faster cut than this 18 teeth per inch cut or this 24 teeth per inch cut. However, if you're cutting a nice thin piece of metal that's maybe a sixteenth of an inch or so in that neighborhood, you're going to want to use as high a teeth count as you can because if you use these larger teeth counts, you're going to pick up that piece of metal and it's going to just start slapping all over the place, bend the metal. It's going to be just a really bad cut. So you're going to want to use high tooth count for the smaller, thinner metal that you have. So what does it mean teeth per inch? When you see this, you'll see TPI and that means teeth per inch. This one happens to be five teeth per inch. So that means if you were to put a ruler down and put this saw blade on the ruler, you would get five teeth in one inch. There is five teeth per inch in that saw blade. It's that simple. This is 24 teeth per inch. Now, if you want to sit and try counting that, you can be my guest, but I'm just going to take their word for it. Let me give you a good basic rule of thumb here. You're going to need two teeth touching the metal here at all times. That's a good rule. I've got a 16th inch piece of metal here and I've got a 14 tooth per inch saw blade. And as you can see here, you can only get one blade touching that metal piece at any one time. Now, if you try cutting this with a sawzall, this thing is going to be next to impossible. It's just going to be pulling this thing all over the place. Now if we try an 18 teeth per inch blade, you can see it's a little bit better, but still we don't have two teeth touching here. This is still not going to be great. Now let's go to the 24 tooth per inch blade. You can see here we've got two teeth touching the metal. 
this is going to see how it doesn't stick anywhere near as bad. You're going to want to use a 24 tooth per inch to cut something like this to get any hope of cutting this metal here. The same rule would apply if you're using a jigsaw. You want two teeth at least all the time making contact with the metal in order to cut it so it's not going to just absolutely destroy your work or destroy the saw blade. But with a jigsaw you have the advantage of a little foot holding the work down and you can put your body over the top of the work. You still want to use the same rule. At least two teeth touching that work at all times. Now I'm going to attempt to cut this piece of sheet metal using an 18 tooth per inch blade. I've got a little clamp holding this down and you can see, you'll be able to see how much this metal is going to be flopping around. You can see how much of a pain in the ass that is going to be. That is not going to go well for you. I've switched over to a 24 tooth per inch blade. This is probably still not going to be great, but it will be better than the 18. You can see it at least starts to cut the sheet metal. You can see cutting metal with a sawzall is just, it's just not the ideal tool for the job. Not unless you're just destroying it, you're demolishing something, then it really doesn't matter. But if you want to cut metal, use anything but a sawzall. So if it's so hard to cut sheet metal with a sawzall, why in the world would they even make metal cutting blades for a sawzall? Well, there is a perfect scenario for using a sawzall with a metal cutting blade. If you have wood with nails in it, and you want to save the wood, like let's say you're cutting apart a pallet, that is the perfect scenario for using a metal cutting blade. You don't have to worry about the metal jumping around. Nails are usually wide enough so you can use an 18 tooth blade on there and it'll work just fine. Slice it right off like butter and the wood is still in good condition. I hope this video has at least answered some of your questions on Sawzall blades. You can always ask more questions in the comments section below, but before you go, let me give you one last piece of advice for all of you absolute beginners out there who might be thinking of buying a Sawzall to start building projects. My advice to you is stay away from the Sawzall. Do not buy a Sawzall. The Sawzall is a jackhammer of the saw world. It is mainly like I said earlier in the video, a demolition tool. It's not really for building. If you only have enough money to buy one saw, either get a circular saw or get a little jigsaw like this. The circular saw is going to give you some nice smooth cuts. You can do rips, you can do cross cuts with it. Now the jigsaw, on the other hand, you can do cross cuts with it, but you can also cut out shapes with it and you got a lot more control over a jigsaw than you will over a reciprocating saw. Plus you can put metal blades on this thing and cut some small sheet metal with it. Ah, and there is one more thing I need you to see. It has been chosen for you specifically from the algorithm. And that is this video right here. Now for this cutting experiment I'm going to be using my good old Dewalt reciprocating reciprocating saw, reciprocating saw. You can even get little metal cutting saw blades to cut metal with it. And this is going to let you get, 